Hi, welcome to episode three of this series of videos I'm making called Favorite Song That I Taught This Week. Uh, this week's submission comes from my Thursday afternoon student, Jay Pickett, who is an awesome gu young guitar player uh, who I'm super jealous of because he's way more talented than I was at his age. And uh, I, he probably won out on a little bit of nostalgia this week because this song came out when I was uh, between eighth grade and freshman year of high school, 14 years old. It's the theme song to the movie Back to the Future. It's Huey Lewis's The Power of Love. So away we go. This song has three chord progressions. There are three, three basic chord progressions. There's lots of little variations with one of them. Uh, so I'm going to break down the three chord progressions, and uh, then I'll go through the variations of the one that's a, a little bit more uh, intricate in terms of its variations. Okay, so the first chord progression we hear in the song goes like this. Okay, great. So that's the intro. And so what it is, is it's just a series of power chords. I'm not barring anything. I just keep my finger really flat, like, like most players do when they play power chords, just to mute my strings. Uh, and I'm only playing the A string uh, at the third fret and the fifth fret of the D. This is a C5 power chord. The next thing we see is an open E note. Then an F power chord. So that's the first fret of the E, third fret of the A. Again, not barring, just muting. And then up a whole step to a G. The count here is really cool. It's syncopated. It's, uh, syncopated. it's going eighth notes, all downstroke with the right hand. Um, preferably on the bridge to get a pickup setting to get a little bit more of a, an edge out of your out of your amp and your guitar. So it's counted like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So this last chord that he sneaks in is is still a G. It's just moved over a string and it's inverted. This is a B in the bass, but it's still the G on the top. So, so this is actually. This is actually the root of the chord. It's a G chord, but it's got a B in the bass. So, it, oh, sorry, I got distracted with the count. So let me go back and do that again. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Great. So that's the intro. But later on, it's also the chorus um, because it plays a new chord progression the fourth time around. So it plays it three times at the beginning of the song, stops on the G. One and two and three. And that's how the intro is concluded before it goes into the uh, next section. But in the chorus, it doesn't end that way. It plays the progression three times, and on the fourth time, it, it adds a new chord progression of B flat, which is the first fret of the A. First fret of the E, F, five, G, and three, and four, and one. And that's how the chorus ends. Um, so it's the same progression three times in the intro, three times again on the chorus, but then add the new progression that I just showed you for the end of the chorus. Cool. Progression number two in the song is the one that's really uh, gets me, I don't know, it makes me smile. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just kind of like a little chord riff with with uh, double stops and triads. Double stops are two string shapes or two string chords, and triads having uh, being uh, three notes, uh, three chords, three notes in a chord. Excuse me, three strings. Cool. So here's how it works: uh, D string, fifth fret with the ring finger, G string, uh, pinky finger, and then I'm gonna play the same two strings barred with the just the tip of my index finger. I kind of bend my finger like that so I don't over over bar and get more strings than I need. So uh, here's the riff, and then I'll break it down a little bit further. One. And so what that is, first off, I would flip to the neck pickup for a softer sound for this section because it's a little more chill. Um, and uh, here's, here's what we have. So this is C minor, the little part I just explained. Then it becomes an E flat major by taking your pinky off and adding a new string and becoming a triad here with uh, the middle finger on B4. I'm still barring here. So the next move is like that. So you're going. So 
C minor and E flat, then up a whole step, this is F, and then walk it back down. So it's the same three chords, just descending. And that's the main riff that gets played many, many times in the song, but there's little variations with it where they play the, the end of the phrase with different chords here and there, and, and more on that later. So that's chord progression number two, if you just want the simple version of Power of Love. Uh, that's it. Now, the most involved section in terms of the amount of chords that are in it is the bridge section, which happens after the second chorus of the song. So just for, for a lyric reference, it's the, it's the part of the song where you hear them sing, uh, I say that all in love is fair, yeah, but you don't care you know, that section of the song. So to break those down, it's pretty cool. There's a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, sort of chromaticism and just tension in the chords. It's really neat. So what it is, first off, just the guitar player is playing uh, the eighth fret, just like you would play an A shape, but all the way up here at the eighth fret. This makes it an E flat. And then it's the same shape that you saw me, uh, saw, saw him play in the verse, which is this triad. So I'm playing 9, 7, and 8 on the D, G, and B strings. This is a G major chord. There would be the root note, but also here's the root note. And then take your ring finger up a half step and bar it. Uh, and just still play the three strings, D, G, and B. And this is a C minor. So I'll break that down again. So this chord could be played first off any way you want. You could play three fingers, three fingers like this, or just bar it. Say that all in the, there's G and then C minor. Uh -huh. And then we have uh, our first like seventh or ninth chord is actually a ninth. Uh, all the others have been triads. And that chord is the F9, and you're going to play 8, 7, 8, 8, starting with the A string. Yeah, but you don't care. Great. Then the next chord is an A flat, uh, played like so. Uh, you have six, five, four, again, D, G, and B strings only. Then bring it down a half step and exchange these two fingers and you're back to uh, actually the E flat again. Then the second time he plays it, he adds a note here. So it becomes six, five, four, three. So you need all four fingers. Then to the E flat again. And then back to A flat again, just a normal triad this time. And then, this is fun, they play a G sus4 and then a G. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to bring this, this shape back a half step. We're now going to bar the high E. And the sus4 part is we're going to add our pinky to the fifth fret of the G string. Now, I'm holding this down still, my middle finger here, because I'm going to take my pinky off when I go. Like so. So here's that whole section. that. I'm so sorry. Let me do that again. The first one of these, then the second one was A flat major 7. The third time, it goes to G sus 4. I'll do that one more time. I'm wasting, wasting video space, but might as well. Go for it. A flat, E flat, flat major seven here that's where I messed up <laughs> a flat G sus and that's the power and then back into that great so that's that's the entire song in terms of the highlights the big points you have to know like all of the main chord progressions now, if you really are going for the details of the song and say you're playing in a cover band and you really want to do it right and you want to know it from start to finish, um, what happens with the second chord progression is that it's, there's a series of variations in these. So I'm just going to go chronologically through the song. We're going all the way back to the top. We finish the intro. It does this. 
normal than this. So it has that little variation there. So what was that? All right, so it's the same as the main riff. F, but instead of coming back down to E flat, you're gonna go up a half step and make a B flat major triad back to F, like so. That was that variation. Then Huey comes in singing, the power of love is a curious thing. So each verse does the riff four times. So we're now in verse one, and there are four, four reps of this riff. Um, the variations happen on the second time and the fourth time. So once again, there's four reps of the riff, but time two and time four have variations. So here are the, here's the, here's the verse. Third time. Whoops, sorry. So that's how the ver first verse is played. So the two variations were uh, second pass through the verse, just rhythmically. So it's the same chords, but it, the rhythm is quarter notes instead of eighths. And the last time, same rhythm, but the chords go E flat up to F. That concludes verse number one. Then there's one pass of the riff instrumentally before verse two. And what that does is the one of the first variations we looked at. It goes... It does B flat and F up there as well. So next is the second verse. And the second verse, like the first, is four passes of the riff but it's the normal riff three consecutive times this time, but the fourth time, I had to make notes on this, I gotta look. <laughs> the fourth time, it, it, uh, it plays with eighth notes like that instead of syncopating them. Here's how that sounds. This is the last time you hear the riff before it goes into the chorus, which is don't need money, that part, don't need fame. So here it is, one. That's how it transitions into it. So one more time on that. All right, great. So that gets us all, that gets us all the way to the first chorus. There's only one other verse, which happens after that chorus. And that verse is exactly like the last verse I explained, uh, where you play the riff four times, but the fourth time it plays the same variation I just showed you because it's going into another chorus. Three times, then the fourth is... And so on. Cool. So after that chorus um, comes the bridge. And we already talked about the bridge. Um, yes. And so coming out of the bridge, there's a, uh, a little instrumental section and Huey's ad-libbing uh, some lyrics over that. And um, yeah, you play the riff twice normally. And then the third time you play it, this is the last time you play it before the guitar solo kicks in. It'll just play uh, a variation I showed you before. So two times normal in this little segue to the solo. Then the third time it's going to go like so. Then when the solo uh, happens, it's still the riff and there's several variations. Basically what happens is the riff goes eight full times. It's kind of a long guitar solo. It kind of used to be the trend back in the day on a hit song. Um, but uh, it's kind of a long guitar solo. It's eight passes of the, of the riff. And variations only happen on the fourth, the fifth, and the eighth times. And the variations are ones you've already learned uh, to this point, if, you've been, if you're still watching at this point. Uh, the variations are fourth time, which is E flat, B flat. Then the fifth time, it goes... Uh, uh, excuse me, it goes E flat twice. This is the only new one, actually. It stays on E flat for those two. And then the final time, because he's heading back into the chorus, um, 
it plays the same segue it always did going into the courses prior, which is... And then you're into the chorus, so... And that is the power of love. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Sorry this was a little bit longer. It was a lot more detail. <laughs>